sci-fi, horror, fantasy, absurdism in the extreme. It's all available here in the Tales from the Omni Vault book series. Check the description for Amazon links so you can get your copies and start reading today. Thank you all, and now, on to the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and welcome to Genre Benders, Obscurities, and Flawed Gems, where we look at the best stuff you've never heard of. Today we go into the realm of the short story, a medium that's not always as appreciated as it should be. A short story is often likened to a tempest in a teacup, something brief but impactful. Many a great writer got started writing short stories before moving to the big leagues. Some authors worked exclusively in that realm. I myself have dabbled in the medium. All well and good, Omni, but have you ever wondered just how short a story can get? That I have, Snazzy, but finding it is just about as easy as writing it. For some, writing a short story comes as naturally as breathing, but that doesn't mean it's a walk in the park. The whole point is to include everything you expect from a complete story within a confined space. All of the necessary information about the characters, the world they live in, and what's at stake must be conveyed within only a handful of pages. How many or how few can depend, and most of the time it's the sci-fi and horror writers who experiment with how short they can get. I actually wrote a very short story for my collection Assorted Absurdities, an audio version of which is available right here on YouTube. The Parable of the Man Who Slew Dragons comes in at just shy of two and a half pages, and within that time it conveys a short story that spans a few years, hitting the highlights in order to convey a particular sociological message. The brevity of this tale is because the parable format allows for large swaths of time to be condensed. Big events are happening, and the minutia can be inferred by the reader. It's definitely short, but I won't pretend that it's the shortest. Even shorter is The Swordsman of Varnus by Clive Jackson. Clocking in at just under two full pages, this tale is best described as a single scene from a much greater epic. The whole thing is styled after the works of Edgar Rice Burroughs, specifically his Barsoom novels, and follows our dashing hero and his beautiful bride as they draw their swords and slash through hordes of alien foes. The brevity here, however, is because the Swordsman of Varnus is a pastiche of Burroughs, and it ends abruptly with an Indiana Jones punchline when one of the aliens remembers that he has a gun and shoots the heroes. There's nothing more to say after that, so the story ends. Mm, two pages is pretty short, but that can't be the limit, Omni. In order for something to be the shortest, the ratio of information conveyed to space used conveying it has to be extreme. Indeed, Snazzy, and many people have certainly tried to reach that extreme. Ralph O. Hughes Jr. penned a short story entitled Racial Memory. This yarn is comprised of five paragraphs, not even filling one full page. Each one conveying a similar scene from different points in history, from the distant past to the dark future. The overall idea is to show the cyclical nature of human history, specifically emphasizing the nature of violence. We don't really get to know the protagonists of each scene, so we're unsure if they deserve the dire fates awaiting them, but that's not really the point. Our takeaway is supposed to be that some things never change, and perhaps they never will. Okay, we're getting closer, but I don't believe five paragraphs is really as short as it gets. Nor should you, Snazzy. In fact, it turns out that the competition for reaching the shortest story ever is very well documented. If you're wondering where I'm finding all of the short stories mentioned in this video, they're compiled in this tome entitled The Ackermanthology, put together by none other than Mr. Sci-Fi himself, Forrest J. Ackerman. You might want to clarify who that is for some of the audience, Omni. Which is crazy to me because every sci-fi fan should know who this guy is. Forrest J. Ackerman, or Uncle Forey as he was called by fans, pioneered the art of being a professional nerd. While he has several fiction writing credits to his name, fans know him best as the man who started Famous Monsters of Filmland, the first genre fanzine to go mainstream. Other mags like Star Trek Insider, Otaku USA, G-Fan, and Horror Hound, to name but a few, wouldn't exist if not for this publication taking off. Heck, you could even say that YouTubers like myself are all just living in his very long shadow. As mentioned, he's the one who put this compilation of strange sci-fi together, but his name will become even more significant as the video goes on. 
Anyway, the Ackermanthology contains the shortest sci-fi story ever, but it also chronicles the history of what led up to it. For a while, the record for shortest story ever was held by Frederick Brown, and it was comprised of two sentences. Quote, The last man on Earth sat alone in a room. There was a knock on the door. Talk about efficiency, right? That first sentence is very densely packed. In just ten words, we meet our protagonist, learn his backstory, and know his location. The second sentence of seven words delivers a shocking twist, and like any good twist, it leaves us wondering. How did this guy become the last man on Earth? Who can it be knocking at his door? Is this knocking a glimmer of hope or a dark omen? Does the specification of last man give us any clue of who or what is knocking? Is the sound of knocking even real? Is the last man's perception of himself as such true? Just two sentences, but they provide us in the audience with a lot to think about and discuss with each other. I heard a different version of that story that's shorter by one letter. Instead of knock, it's lock, which changes the whole vibe, but it's still essentially the same thing. Later on, Weaver Wright came along with an even shorter story along similar lines. Weaver's version goes like this, quote, The last man on Earth. Who buried him? Now we have an even bigger twist. The first sentence seems like an introduction, but the second sentence reveals it to be an epitaph. It raises a valid question, not to mention the additional question of who's asking. Once again, we could probably talk for days about the implications. A bit later, no less than Ray Bradbury came up with a single-sentence story entitled The Year 2150 A.D., which reads as follows. Quote, In the year 2150 A.D., instead of one son, there were two. Well, that pretty much says it all, doesn't it? We can easily infer the nuclear holocaust that those words convey. Later, Bonnie L. Heinz told a similar story in an even shorter space. Entitled Octomageddon 2419 A.D., it simply reads, quote, The End. And again, that pretty much says it all. Both tales speak to fears of the Cold War, particularly that of nuclear holocaust. The brevity emphasizes how quick and how definitive a nuclear war would be. Now, you might think that two words is about as short as a short story can get. But if you did, you'd be wrong. Do you remember how I brought up Forrest J. Ackerman earlier in the video? Well, as it turns out, he holds the record for the shortest sci-fi story ever written. In fact, it's the shortest story ever written in any genre. It's entitled Cosmic Report Card Earth, and it reads as follows, quote, F. That's all, folks. One single solitary letter. Now, granted, the title is certainly pulling a lot of weight to provide context for that letter, but a title is generally not considered part of the story. So for all intents and purposes, that letter is the extent of the text. Yeah, but there's a lot conveyed by that letter, isn't there? Boatloads, Snazzy. Boatloads. For starters, we all know that the letter F, in context of a report card, is a failing grade, as low as you can get. To have that as a grade for a whole planet raises many questions. Why has Earth failed? Is the grade applied to Earth in its entirety? Is it applied just to humanity? Maybe it's being applied to the literal planet. If Earth gets an F, what sort of planets get an A? And hang on, who's even doling out these grades? And why? By what authority? Are they aliens? Gods? Alien gods? Is Earth allowed a second chance, or are all grades final? And what does failing mean in this context? There are no solid answers provided, of course, because there aren't supposed to be. The point is to promote discussion, not to provide a safe answer for people to cling on to. One thing is for certain, though. This is as short as a story can get. Is it, though? Well, yeah. How can you possibly get shorter than one letter? What about a blank page? If the title provides context without being part of the story, isn't it possible to come up with a title that could contextualize a blank page and have that count? Hmm. That is an interesting proposal. I suppose a title could provide context for that sort of thing, but it would have to be one heck of a title. 
but it does raise a significant question. Can someone really be said to have written the shortest story ever if the page doesn't contain any actual writing? Well, I don't know. I just wondered if it was possible is all. I'm not so sure it is, but then again, maybe it's not my place to decide. All I can tell you for now is that Uncle Forey currently holds the record for the shortest story ever written. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but sometimes even that can't compare to a single letter. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. Say, how much did Uncle Forey get paid for that story anyway? One hundred dollars even. A hundred bucks for one letter? Man, nice work if you can get it, right? <laughs>